Okay, so welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Janelle Garvida. I work for Girl Scouts of Hawaii. Here with us today is Miss Alicia Gu. She was born and raised in Hawaii, uh, graduated high school from Hawaii Baptist Academy. She went to college um, in Hawaii as well in HPU and majored in finance. Uh, she became a flight attendant at Hawaiian Airlines after college, but uh, was always fascinated by, by the idea of becoming a pilot. And so she started taking flight lessons in Hawaii at Barber's Point Aviation, then moved to the mainland to get her commercial license and flight instructor light certificates. Um, Ms. Gu became a flight instructor in Arizona, teaching students how to fly, and then moved back home to fly at Mukulele Airlines to get some exper experience flying in the islands. Uh, she got hired at SkyWest Airlines two years ago and currently based in San Francisco as a first officer flying all over the country. All right, welcome, Ms. Gu. <laughs> Hi, thank you for having me. It's really cool to be here. Um, I was a Girl Scout a really long time ago, but I didn't really get very far. I think I was only a brownie and just for one year. I just remember selling cookies and being a brownie and wearing like the uniform and I thought that was the best part. Um, but yeah, I was born and raised here in Hawaii. Um, I went to school, um, like Janelle said, at Hawaii Baptist Academy and when I went to college I majored in finance. Um, cause I thought I was going to have a career in business when I grew up. Um, but then I became a flight attendant at Hawaiian airlines and I just loved traveling, um, and the lifestyle so much that I wanted to stay in the airline industry. Um, but like she said, I was just fascinated by the idea of becoming a pilot and I would look at the pilots in the cockpit and they just seemed so cool and I just wanted to know more about what their job was and what they did. So I started taking flight lessons and the first time that I got into a small airplane and the flight instructor let me take the controls, I was just hooked. I was just, I just loved it. It was the coolest feeling to be able to fly an airplane you know, like 3,000 feet above the ground and see everything from the sky. So I started taking more flight lessons and I decided to commit to it 100% and um, I moved to the mainland to get the rest of my flight certificates. Um, and then the rest is history. Um, I got some other jobs, flight instructing and flying at Mokulele. And um, then I got hired at SkyWest, which is a regional airlines in the mainland. And we mostly fly um, shorter flights around the United States. Um, and I've been there for two years. And it's really cool because I get to fly all over um, the United States, seeing tons of different cities, tons of different little towns and states that I wouldn't normally go to if I was planning a vacation and it's just been an awesome experience getting to spend so much time in places that we don't get um, to see a lot in Hawaii so do you guys have any questions or any um, yeah any questions I have some here. Um, so let's see, what is my day-to-day -day like in the airlines? So you start the day off by going to the airport and you do a pre-flight inspection of the airplane that you're gonna fly for that day. So that means you walk around the airplane and inspect the entire thing from the wheels to the wings to the tail, to every little nook and cranny that you can have on the airplane and just make sure that everything is up to standard, that there's nothing missing, that there's nothing broken, that everything's where it's supposed to be. Then after you do your pre-flight inspection, you get back in the airplane and you prepare the flight plan and check the weather. Now checking the weather is probably the most important part because you want to make sure that where you're flying to and where you're flying out of has good weather because weather is a pilot's worst enemy. Um, and also preparing the flight plan is important as well. You want to check to make sure that there's no bad weather around your route of flight and you want to make sure that you're not flying through any military airspace or anywhere that you're not supposed to be. Um, and you also choose an altitude. So you want to make sure your altitude is high enough and has a good, 
has a good um, has good weather out there as well because you can choose an altitude that has turbulence and we don't like turbulence because it's really uncomfortable. So after we do all that, pre-flight inspection, check the weather and create a route, then we get clearance to fly from air traffic control. So that depends on a lot of things. It could be uh, it could, we could be delayed because of traffic, the airport could be really busy, or there could be a lot of airplanes coming in. So we make sure that we have clearance to take off from ATC before we can actually do that. Now, I can have, I probably fly about four to five hours a day, and that's like three or four flights maybe at the most. And at the end of our day, we normally stay somewhere that's not our home base. It's probably just, you know, a city, like interim city. Uh, we stay there overnight and then we just do it all over again the next day. Um, that's probably the coolest part is being able to stay overnight someplace that, you know, you haven't been to before. And you don't, maybe you don't have a lot of time, but it's, you know, it's kind of neat just to be somewhere that's not home. Um, let's see. Okay, so I think we have two questions, actually. So okay, first awesome. one, oh, okay. First one uh, from Michaela. She said, what did your family think of when you told them your interests? Oh, that's a great question. My family was super excited. Um, they thought that being a pilot was really, really cool. So nobody in my family has ever been a pilot before. I'm the first one in my family to ever become a pilot. And so I think my, my parents and everybody else in my family, it was very like, it was just different, you know, because nobody else has done it. And so for, for you to be like the first person in your family to do something is really neat. All right. Okay, we have two questions for Ali from Ali. So the first question is that, do you remember the Brownie Smile song? <laughs> no, I do not remember the Brownie Smile song. <laughs> That's embarrassing. I don't remember it. <laughs> the second question is, do the men treat you as an equal or not? Wow, that is a really, really good question. Um, and it's kind of hard to answer. So I think for the most part, yes, people, people being men um, do treat me as equal. I think now in our day and age, we're lucky enough that there are more women and in the industry and women have um, equal opportunity when it comes to career prospects and, you know, being in a male dominated industry. So I personally have never had any experiences that I felt where my gender um, was an issue or made a difference. And I feel really lucky. Um, so I think for the most part, people, we, I am treated as an equal, which is which is huge, you know, which makes me feel like us as girls and women have a place in aviation. So some like background, um, there are only about 52,000 female pilots in the United States, which makes, about, which makes around 8% of all the pilots are female. And only 8,000 of those pilots are commercial pilots, which is what I do, which is a really small number considering how many pilots there are in the United States. I think it's like 600, 500,000 pilots. And only 8,000 of them are commercial airline pilots, which is a very small number. So the airline industry, um, specifically pilots, is definitely male dominated. And so to go back to your question, you know, being a female, you're a very small number. And I think, you know, we're lucky enough now that there have been so many women before us that have been trailblazers that have set precedents and help us pave the way so that we can do what we do today. And um, we're really lucky to have, you know, the opportunities that we do. And that's part of like, why being a female pilot is so cool, 
you know? People look into the cockpit and they're like, oh my God, it's a girl. Like, I love that, that's so neat. And I, I mean, I definitely enjoy that and appreciate that. So that's a great question. All right. Oh, we have one more question from Michaela. Okay, so she's asking if you prefer night or day flights and why? Ooh, that's a great <laughs> question. Hmm. I, okay, so it depends. I like night flights when I'm flying into big cities. So for example, probably one of my favorite places to fly into is New York City. And especially at night because you can fly over, I don't know if you guys have ever been to New York, but you can fly over Times Square and see all the lights from the city and Times Square is just lit up and it just looks so cool. Um, so I like night flights when I'm flying into cities where there's like tons to see and you know, things are just lit up. It just looks really cool. Um, I like, I also like day flights when I'm flying over someplace like the Grand Canyon or, um, Yosemite National Park. I don't know if you guys have ever been there, but that's a really cool view too. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, it's hard to choose. I like both. I don't know. Well, that's a great question. Yes, definitely depends on the scenery. Definitely depends on what you're looking at. And daytime too, like you can see like if there's rainbows or, you know, like, and that's really cool to see from the air too. Okay. Oh, we see uh, Ali's question. So she's asking how was your first flight and were there any problems? Oh, that's a good question. Um, my first flight, um, I was flying here in Hawaii and I was flying um, a small airplane. Um, I remember it being really bumpy because it's a lot, it's pretty, gets pretty windy in Hawaii. Um, it was, no, I don't remember there being any huge problems. Um, it was just really exciting. And I just remember thinking like, I can't believe I'm in this small airplane, like above the, above the ground. Cause it was my first time being in a small airplane. Um, and it was just, a super neat experience. I don't know. It was, I don't remember there being any problems. It was just windy and it was just cool to be above the ground. What was your scariest flight and what happened in it? <laughs> okay, let me see. My scariest flight, I can't pinpoint any particular flight where I was really scared. Um, but probably the scary with bad problems with bad problems, like bad problems on a flight. Hmm. I haven't had any super bad problems. Um, we go through a lot of training and our company does a really good job at making sure that everything goes smoothly. Um, I think some of the scariest flying I've had though was during weather. So like I told, like I said before, like weather is the pilot's greatest obstacle, like biggest enemy. Um, so flying through weather can be kind of scary, especially if there's thunderstorms, you know. Um, but like I said, they train us really well to fly through weather and turbulence and you prepare just in case something happens. So the best thing you can do when it comes to weather is avoid it. But if you can't, then you rely on your training. So I can remember maybe one time and it was when I was flying on the East Coast in New York City and it was during the winter time and so when in the winter like the weather is especially bad on the East Coast like there's always snowstorms and blizzards and so I just remember we um, were on the ground and we got this like call from air traffic control saying there is a big you know storm coming through and we just sat on the ground until the storm passed but like you could see it coming with like the thunder and you know like the weather was just really really bad and for for us to be sitting on the ground I was thinking to myself like I'm so glad that I'm not in the air right now having to fly through that because for us it's 
you know, it's pretty crazy seeing the weather. And then for passengers too, it's really uncomfortable to be in turbulence and the airplane is moving around and shaking. So, I mean, that's probably, I wasn't in the air, but that's probably one of the, you know, the most interesting things that has happened is just, you know, watching like these huge storms pass you and just thinking like, thank God I'm on the ground. Um, let's see, what else do you guys want to know? Are any of you, oh, uh, <laughs> have you ever flown to a former quarterback from Alabama on your plane? No, I've never flown to a, I would love to though. I think that would be super cool. That would be so cool to fly to a, <laughs> if I ever fly to Alabama, or I think he's going to Miami now. Um, if I ever fly down there, I'll be sure to like, take a look out for him. I've, I've only flown a couple celebrities. Probably you guys wouldn't know them because they're, I, I didn't even know it was a celebrity until, until like, she got off the airplane. But, um, the, uh, Patti LaBelle, I don't know if you guys know who that is. <laughs> yeah, Patti LaBelle, she's a singer. But some, every once in a while we will have celebrities on our airplane, which is pretty cool. <laughs> oh, so I do have questions. Um, do you have to make good grades to be a pilot or qualifications? That's a great question. Um, yeah, having good grades is really important. So when it comes to major airlines, um, they definitely take things like your grades into consideration when they're when it comes to hiring. Um, so yeah, getting grades is, good, is really important because they will ask you, you know, what was your GPA in college and what was your GPA in high school? And they'll take that into consideration. And if you have a good GPA, um, it re really makes you stand out from the rest of the applicants. I think um, getting good grades also shows that you have commitment and that you're serious about what you do and, you know, um, what you're studying and that is definitely a huge part about being a pilot is having commitment and um make sure, making sure that you're doing the best that you can you know because when it comes to flying people around you want to make sure that you're giving your passengers the best experience and the best possible flight that you can so i think getting good grades in school is a huge part of that so definitely having good grades is important and did you want to go ahead and show the pictures that you have? Oh, yeah. So I have, I Googled some pictures of the airplane that I fly just to give you guys some uh, visuals. I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so I don't know if you guys can see. Let me know if you can't. But um, this is the airplane that I fly. It's um, painted with United Express colors because we fly United. Um, it's called an Embraer 175. It's a 76 seat airplane and it has two jet engines um, that are underneath the wing and, and it's made in Brazil. Um, and then let me show you what the inside of the cockpit looks like. So this is the inside of the cockpit. The bigger picture on the right is from the back and you can see all the buttons and knobs on the top. And then in the middle, that's what we call the yoke, is like they look like handlebars. Um, that's specific to the Embraer. So normally um, yokes or like, you know, the steering wheel of the airplane is kind of U-shape, but in the Embraer, they kind of have this like top handlebar bicycle looking thing. And then I don't know if you can see in the picture, but in the very bottom, there's like this white bar. Um, that's the throttle. That's where you add power or you can decrease the power. And so all those buttons and everything in the airplane is part of your studying, part of how you get to know the airplane and how you get to know like, what everything does and it's kind of crazy when you look at it you're like how do you know what all that stuff does but 
you know, you go through training, you study hard, it takes a lot of memorizing, but at, you know, at the end of your training, you know what every single thing does. And that's a part of, you know, getting to know your airplane and understanding how to fly it. And then here's another picture. This is the airplane I flew at Mokulele. This is in Hawaii. Um, this is called a Cessna Caravan or a Cessna 208. And if you can see, this airplane has a propeller and the wings are high up above the, um, are like on the top of the airplane. So the other, the airplane I currently fly is a jet and then this is a propeller airplane. And so this airplane that Mokulele flies has, can hold nine people and um it's a lot slower than the airplane i fly now but it does the job and it gets you know people from one place to another and we mostly fly it in between um the hawaiian islands so it doesn't have to go very far and that's it any questions about that oh michaela is there three pilots on a plane so that's a really good question. So it depends on how far you're flying. So for us, for me, we don't fly longer than maybe three or four hours. So you only need two pilots. If you're flying lo longer distances, maybe anything over eight, 10, or even like 15 hours, then you need more pilots. So it depends on, um, how long you're going to be in the air and not necessarily distance. What's the most pilots on a plane? I think the most pilots on an airplane is maybe four. And that's like if they're going really far, for example, maybe like New York to Abu Dhabi or New York to Australia, like you're going like halfway across the world, then you probably need four pilots because we can only technically work for a limited amount of time, but because, you know, you get tired and then it makes like making your decision making a lot harder. So they add pilots to the airplane so that we can rest, if that makes sense. I think we had questions from Ali. So first one is, what's the farthest you've ever flown? And the second is, have you ever flown a plane with water landing gear? Oh, um, the farthest I've ever flown probably would have been like three and a half to four hours and that would be from San Francisco to um, Minneapolis or like San Francisco to Kansas City that's like three and a half four hours not super far but and then have you ever flown a plane with water landing gear no I haven't that like that's always been something I've wanted to do, um, like to fly a float plane, because I don't know, it just seems really cool to be able to land the airplane on water. So I think that's definitely on my bucket list. That's definitely something I want to learn to do. Um, yeah, I mean, that's landing an airplane on water just sounds creepy. Uh, let's see, another one. Our propeller airplanes, used for flights between islands since the plane can only go to a certain altitude. Um, that's a good question. I'm not 100% sure on the answer to this, but I'm gonna give you what I think is probably the answer. So, propeller airplanes, compared to a jet airplane. Um, it's true that they can only go to a certain altitude. Um, I think it's more efficient for like the smaller airplane to go short distances because like flying between, I mean, Michaela, you know, in Hawaii, like Maui to Honolulu is only like 30 minutes on Hawaiian airlines. So it's a really short distance, which means like the airplane doesn't have to go as far and so if you're using like a jet a jet airplane it probably uses it uses more gas and a propeller airplane doesn't and if you're going a short distance you don't have to go as high so i mean i think that's a good i think your question and like you know because it goes between islands only to a certain altitude i think that's a pretty good like hypothesis but that's a tough 
that's a tough question. I think there's a lot of different answers for that, but I think that's a pretty good question. Yeah. All right. Any more questions, girls, before we last minute questions? All right. So I do have one. So if you have any advice for them, um, if you're still thinking about becoming pilots, any uh, advice that you could give them before we end today's pilot talk? Oh, yes. So my biggest piece of advice to anybody who is interested in becoming a pilot is don't give up. So becoming a pilot, like anything else in life, can get hard. Like there's always going to be obstacles. And when it comes to being a pilot, like you always have to be learning and you're always going to be tested. And so whenever it gets hard, just don't give up. So some days you're going to be practicing maybe like your landings, you know, like you're just learning how to fly and you're practicing how to land an airplane and you're going to have bad days where it just like doesn't seem like the landings are sticking. But as long as you get up the next day and try it again and keep practicing, like that's the main thing. And, you know, even extremely experienced pilots have bad landings or have bad days. We all do, you know, whether it's somebody who has like 200 hours or 20,000 hours, like, you know, it's never ever gonna be 100% perfect all the time. So you just have to keep trying and don't ever give up. And if you, have any questions or like want to know a little bit more about you know you know women in aviation or girls in aviation or what it means to be a pilot there's a lot of resources out there now um for girls like you or like women like me um women in aviation.org is a great resource they give tons of scholarships for um flight training or for college um and they have conferences that you can attend where you can meet other girls who are interested in flying um there's also society of women airline pilots which was started by one of the first female commercial airline captains ever and she started the society to help future women you know pilots get to um the commercial level and then AOPA.org is another one where you can um, just learn about flying in general and like theory and practicing and how to get started. So there's a lot of resources out there that can help you if, you know, you decide it's something you want to do. And especially, like I said, don't give up. How long did it take you to get your own mini plane? I don't have my own mini plane. I wish I did. They're really expensive. <laughs> and there's like not that, it's like, it's hard to find somewhere to park an airplane in Hawaii. Um, so it's hard to get one out here. And especially like, there's only so many ways that you can get an airplane to Hawaii and one of them is fly. Um, and so it's hard to get small airplanes out here. But um, I wish I had a small airplane. Uh, I don't though. <laughs> Good question. Maybe you will one day. All right, so I think that's about it. Yeah, girls, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to type it in, but I don't see anything. So thank you so much, Alicia, for being here with us, teaching us about uh, your job and about pilots. Um, thank you so much, girls, for joining us, and have a wonderful day. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, guys. Bye.